Hepatitis B is a small virus, but a big medical problem. Two billion people worldwide are infected with this virus, and 350 million of those will be infected for the rest of their lives. This makes it a bigger problem than HIV, and the majority of those people who are infected are in the developing world. Cambodia is, um, they had a decade of war, and uh, the health structure is destroyed, and uh, people is, no hospital, no uh, place where people can go. Hepatitis B is the second biggest cause of vaccine-preventable deaths in the world, and there wasn't a vaccine for it 20 years ago when I started working in this area. Cambodia is one of the poorest countries in Asia. 25 years after the fall of the Khmer Rouge, the country is still politically fragile and desperately poor. Life expectancy is 57 years, compared with almost 80 in Western Europe. Tens of thousands of people die every year from a lack of basic medical care and preventable diseases. One of Cambodia's biggest killers is hepatitis B. It's endemic here. The disease is transmitted through blood, so at childbirth, hepatitis B passes from generation to generation, from mothers to their babies. The virus is tough, and it can survive outside the body. So it's commonly spread among children. Cuts and grazes from playing in the dirt are open to infection. Ominously, the virus is also caught through sexual intercourse, and there's a booming sex industry in Cambodia. Hepatitis B is a big problem in Cambodia. About 10% of people have it. At the prison, there are no treatment to deal with the problem. Only vaccination can stop it. A tiny number of people are fighting the disease. My name is Rina. I'm, I'm working, I'm Cambodian. I'm working with the UNICEF Health. Rina is part of the team fighting the spread of hepatitis B in Cambodia. The Ministry of Health's mission, through its national immunization program, is to vaccinate every newborn child right across the country. It means that Rina has to leave her baby daughter at home and go to the field to help organize what is a dauntingly large program. This is a, this is a very good uh, program, since we can see, since we introduced this uh, new vaccine into the uh, immunization program. So the vaccine is new, the distribution system is new. Cambodia is the first country in the region to try this and the government wants the program to be nationwide by next year. It's pioneering work. Rina must retrain Cambodian health workers and play guide to a senior figure from a UN agency here to make sure it all works. There's an awful lot to do. My name is Heidi Larson. I've been traveling around the world for the past 20 years working on child health. I'm on a new mission working on the introduction of a new vaccine, hepatitis B. The disease is a big killer. It kills nearly 500,000 people a year, a half a million. And now we have a vaccine for it. So it's quite exciting to be here in Cambodia. We just introduced this vaccine uh, within the last two years. And I'm coming to see how it's getting on. This is Dr. Mark Thurs. He's a leading hepatitis B specialist at St. Mary's Hospital in London. You have hepatitis B uh, for two, three or four decades before any symptoms occur. So lots of people will carry the virus and, and certainly not know about it. Eventually you mount an immune response against the virus and those cells that are infected are destroyed. And they may be replaced but they may also be replaced by scar tissue. The scar tissue stops the liver from working properly, and the whole process will lead to liver cancer. If a cancer is detected at an early enough stage, then you can have it removed surgically. In a 
the London Operating Theatre, a new surgical technique brings a breakthrough to liver cancer victims. Surgeons use a probe to heat and seal the healthy tissue around the cancer. Once this work is complete, the tumour can be removed with no blood loss. It's a revolutionary development, but there's a catch. Of course, these uh, technologies are available here in London and in the Western world, but they're not widely available in the developing world, where hepatitis B is most common. There was no protection against hepatitis B when Cheng Ong was young. It has taken decades to develop into a life-threatening disease. His swollen stomach is a sign of cirrhosis and almost certainly liver cancer. <coughs> hepatitis B is a hidden killer. Its victims, like Cheng Ong, don't know they have it until it's too late. The symptoms include progressive tiredness leading to an inability to work, and the only hope now is surgery an impossible dream here in Cambodia. The virus has now turned to cancer and it will kill him. My family thinks I am hopeless. Since I got this disease, I am not able to work. I just find it very difficult. I feel very ill. I don't know how I get this disease. I so worry that I won't get better. Cheng On's eyes show the typical yellowing of a failing liver. He's only in his 40s, but he can no longer work, and the disease is destroying his family. His wife has left, and his children now care for him. Cheng On went to hospital, but was sent home to die. Rina's journey takes her to local hospitals and health centers. She knows her country can't afford treatments for hepatitis B and that tragically it is likely that rather than curing patients, the struggling healthcare system may have increased the hepatitis B infection rate. <laughs> Around 10 years ago, many health centers were reusing needles for injections and this accelerated the spread of the virus. The training session that Rina is now holding aims to stop such mistakes from happening again. She shows health workers how to inject the vaccine using new disposable syringes. All the health workers across the country must be retrained, learning about the disease and how it spreads. It is a huge task. We are here today, but we're going to take this road and go on the railroad. The railroad? Yeah. After the training session, Rina meets Heidi. They discuss the logistics of vaccine distribution around the country. The hepatitis B vaccine must be kept between 2 and 8 degrees centigrade. The process of keeping the vaccine chilled throughout this journey is called the cold chain and it begins in Phnom Penh. The vaccine is taken from the cold store and carefully packed in insulated boxes, ready for distribution. Rina and Heidi will follow the vaccine on its voyage into the countryside. The first leg is by motorbike. It's the fastest way to the docks. If all this works, then the whole of Cambodia will benefit. This journey must be repeated time and time again. Every child needs a Hep B jab within a week of birth and then three more vaccinations during the first year of life. The next stage will be by river. Nothing much travels in Cambodia without taking to a boat at some point, and in a country with big rivers and a few good roads, the vaccine is no exception. It's 
totally impressive in the way that they managed to climb over things and, and put big cold boxes. I've seen smaller cold boxes. This is a particularly big one on motorcycles and going from one place to another, keeping all the time the, the temperature right. Um, these are particularly valuable vaccines. They're the new combination ones. One thing that's important to know, too, is that this is not a separate program for hepatitis B. This is adding hepatitis B into an immunization program. So it's building on, a, on an existing infrastructure. But because hepatitis B is special and new, they're, they're paying extra attention to the whole immunization program. So in a way, it's a bit of a catalyst to kind of strengthen their existing system. It's a difficult thing to do. Um, I think sometimes people just think about the vaccination and don't really appreciate or understand how much goes into getting the vaccine from where it's made you know, over continents to get to the, the port of entry or whatever, and then from there get it out to where it needs to go, and all the meanwhile keeping the expiry date right and keeping um, you know, the, at the right temperature and making sure the right children get it. And then it's, it's quite a massive operation to follow it. But there's, there's wonderful stories along the way. Back in London, Dr. Thurs continues his research into the deadly hepatitis B virus. This is one of the most infectious organisms that we know about. Even tiny quantities of the virus are sufficient to set up an infection. This is an electron micrograph showing the virus, and the virus is actually these three particles here. But in addition, the infected liver cells secrete uh, these spheres and filaments, which are actually made up of viral antigens, viral proteins, that is. Uh, and these are secreted to fool the immune system so the immune system doesn't recognize the infected cells and doesn't clear the virus from the body. Usually the infection is acquired very early in life, either from your mother if she's infected or from your um, small childhood friends um, transmitted from uh, open cuts and grazes. So in fact, if you're not vaccinated very early, you miss the opportunity to prevent infection becoming established. And in Cambodia, that's a massive logistical challenge. And the price of failure will be a great many deaths in the years to come. If you vaccinate at a very early stage, you've got a very good chance of controlling the infection. If the mother of the child has the infection, then the vaccine has to be delivered really within a few days of birth. This uh, breaks the cycle of infection from mother to child to mother to child. But also, it's essential to uh, vaccinate other children at an early stage to break that cycle as well, because even they run a very big risk of developing a persistent infection. Hepatitis B used to be a problem here in Europe as well, but a combination of socioeconomic change and the vaccine has made a big impact and has virtually eliminated uh, the virus. And if the vaccination program was rolled out into the developing world, a large number of lives could actually be saved. In the early 1990s, the World Health Organization made hepatitis B a top priority. It recommended that vaccination become a routine jab for all children in countries with high infection rates. In the 130 countries where this has happened, adult deaths from liver cancer have already been reduced. It is still early days for Cambodia, and villages such as Cheng Ong's in Kampong Chang province are now being offered a hepatitis B vaccine for the first time. Cheng Ong's niece, Sen Suk, has a newborn son who ought to be vaccinated. Like many people in Cambodia, San Suk can't read or write, and the best way to let people know about the imminent arrival of the vaccine is word of mouth. Today, hepatitis is the only show in town, and a big crowd of mothers and children has turned out to see what all the fuss is about. These are the very people who need to know about the vaccine. The 
the vaccine has at last arrived in Kampon Chang province with and Heidi and Rina yeah, close yeah, behind. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's coming. On top yeah. of it. Oh, great. It gets and the vaccines are in there also? Yeah, the vaccine and all the uh, vaccination supply. It's like, very uh, hot. I hope there's a good cold box. <laughs> yeah. So far, so uh, good. Safety box, uh, AD syringes, uh, vaccine. After motorbike to boat and back to motorbike, the vaccine and motorbike are now on an open railway cart, the easiest way around here to reach far-flung and remote villages. This can be a dangerous journey. The land either side of the railway track was mined by the Khmer Rouge. Modern landmines are encased in plastic and remain deadly for decades after they were planted. It has been a long journey. The vaccine arrives in Spa Village, finishing as it began aboard a motorbike. This is just one of several dozen smaller cool boxes made from the original shipment that left Phnom Penh. Rina and Heidi also make their way into the village. Wow, that was a long walk. <laughs> they can tell that Cheng Ong is suffering from liver cancer, but when they talk to him, they learn that he doesn't know when or how he got his illness. What were the symptoms? Here, the disease is poorly understood. There's no screening, and many people like Cheng Ong don't even know they're ill. The symptoms can appear to others as laziness and apathy. There is little that can be done for Cheng Ong now. Rina and Heidi hope that his plight will inspire others to be vaccinated. Thank you. But because his illness has broken up his family, his influence with his niece Sang Suk is non-existent and his illness has little effect on her. So it's clear that the hepatitis has created some tensions in the family. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's more than just an illness. It's his wife has left him. Mm -hmm. He has difficult relations with his nieces and the family. If Sang Suk has hepatitis B, and it's very likely that she does in this tightly knit community, she will almost certainly have passed it on to her baby, Russ Yan. With vaccination, the baby will develop immunity and break the cycle of hepatitis B infection. It is vital that he gets the jab as soon after birth as possible. The older the child, the less effective this first vaccination will be. Luckily, Sang Suk attended the earlier village meeting and now she wants her baby vaccinated. Well, it's very encouraging that uh, the mum here, she's already gotten the BCG shot and has a vaccination card. She says she's been informed about the hepatitis B vaccine and measles vaccine. Um, she's an unusual case of someone who, who's actually gone to the health center to have the baby delivered. A lot of uh, women don't have that opportunity or take that initiative. Sang Suk makes her way to the vaccination point at a makeshift health center in the center of the village. The disposable syringes are prepared as each baby arrives. A crowd has gathered. The vaccination program is still the biggest event around, and that's good news for the program. Everybody knows what's happening and why. The Hep B vaccine given at birth costs 27 cents. Babies then receive three more doses combined with a diphtheria jab, each costing $1.20. That's too expensive for many developing countries. For now, the program is only possible with international support from groups like the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization. Eventually, though, the Cambodian government will have to pay its own way. With vaccination so early in his life, Russ Yan has a 95% chance of developing immunity to the chronic form of hepatitis and will be protected against liver cancer. His generation will escape the fate of Cheng Ong's. He will not die slowly from a debilitating disease in middle age. Heidi wants to know if awareness of hepatitis B is improving. Rina acts as translator. What they hear is encouraging. We have specific examples like uh, this young woman who's very aware of her uncle's illness and the connection with the vaccine. 
um, I think it's pretty important, and I think this, this province being the first to introduce it uh, will be a model for the others. Already they're extending to some other provinces, and some of the, the lessons learned in the introduction here will be taken uh, to the other provinces. Hepatitis B is a killer unlike any other. The liver cancer it triggers is the single most lethal cancer for middle-aged men in much of Asia and Africa. Two billion people worldwide have been infected and there are fears that unchecked, the death rate will rise to two million a year as today's babies reach middle age. Without the vaccine, a quarter of all infected children will die. We have two ways of controlling this virus. We can either treat it or we can prevent it. The treatment is expensive and relatively inefficient. So what we must do is vaccinate worldwide and that will save numerous lives. However, we will run into some problems with mass vaccination because the virus can mutate and we will have to develop new vaccines in order to catch up with the virus. In Cambodia, the new vaccination program is doing well. Over the next year, the Ministry of Health will roll it out to more of the population. And, very importantly, this model will work in other countries in the region. For the scientists, hepatitis B is still a challenge, but even a mutating virus can be dealt with. Here, hepatitis B and liver cancer are losing the battle. Today's children face a healthier future than their parents and grandparents.